The eyes of the world are in Venezuela, which is in chaos. There's economic stress, street protests, and an increasingly bitter fight between Nicolas Maduro and Juan Guaido for leadership of the country. But what does that have to do with Rochester? Well, <laughs> look where we are. At the ferry, our ferry. It's in Venezuela right now, and believe it or not, it might just help bring down the Maduro regime. You don't believe me? Why wouldn't it be true? Our ferry was a ghost ship from the get-go. It failed financially three times, triggered criminal charges and an international manhunt, then broke down and limped into a Caribbean shipyard. This is all true, every bit of it. Climb aboard and learn about the real journey of the spirit of Ontario, the most infamous ship in Rochester history. One day, back in 1995, someone had a bright idea. Wouldn't ferry service across Lake Ontario to Toronto be a great way to enliven Rochester and attract tourists? Many of the world's great cities have ferries. Why not us? Before you knew it, the city was building a first-class ferry terminal in Charlotte, and a newly formed company had been recruited to run it. When the Spirit of Ontario first pulled into the Genesee River in April 2004, thousands of people came out to gawk. Thousands more bought tickets. It was the fastest vessel of its kind in the world. Our ferry was the talk of the town and beyond. Rochester had arrived. It lasted 82 days. Just after Labor Day 2004, the ferry abruptly stopped running. The owners went into hiding and sent word they'd been losing money hand over fist. The ship was impounded and offered up for sale. Desperate to salvage ferry service, city officials decided to buy the ferry and run it themselves. Service relaunched in 2005, and this time, it lasted 166 days. The city lost millions more, and in 2006, finally gave up and sold the ship. It was a big black eye for Rochester. But a German company bought the Spirit of Ontario, changed its name to Tanger Jet 2, and sent it to Spain to carry passengers to Morocco. These would be our ferry's salad days. Yeah, it's true that some young Moroccans had to be quarantined aboard, and yeah, a young girl was almost run over by the vessel, but other than that, things went very well. Then, in 2012, someone had a bright idea. Use the ferry to link two cities in Denmark. So the ship, renamed the Dolphin Jet, was sent to the Baltic Sea. It lasted just 26 days. Yes, in less than a month, the company running the Dolphin Jet went bankrupt. Back to Spain went the Dolphin Jet. Then, in the spring of 2013, Major General Eber Garcia Plaza came calling. Garcia Plaza, the Venezuelan transport minister, was a darling of Nicolas Maduro. One of the tasks he was given was to improve ferry service to Margarita, a populous island off the coast of Venezuela, highly attractive to tourists. So he engineered the purchase of three ferries, including the Dolphin Jet, our old ferry. The government paid $17 million for the ferry, which they renamed the Virgin de Coromoto. It began service to Margarita in early 2014. This did not go well. And the following spring of 2015, Garcia Plaza was indicted on embezzlement charges in connection with the purchase of the three ferry, including our old ferry. He fled the country. Interpol put out a warrant for his arrest. Not long after, ferry service to Margarita ground to a halt. Nearly all the vessels that served the island, including the Virgin de Coromoto, were broken. The collapse of the ferry service made the country's front pages and became a potent symbol of the Maduro regime's ineptitude and corruption. Garcia Plaza, however, came out of this unscathed. Claiming the ferry embezzlement charges were a setup, he became a leading critic of the Maduro regime. He now lives in suburban Washington, D.C. and is often quoted in news stories about the power struggle underway in Venezuela, where Guaido and the leaders of many nations, including the United States, are pressuring Maduro to resign. And what of the Virgin de Coromoto, the handsomely appointed ferry that once motored up the Genesee River to the cheers of adoring Rochesterians? Our ferry suffered major engine failure and has been moored in a government shipyard in Puerto Caballo, Venezuela, for the last 18 months. A man who works in the shipyard told us it needs $5 million in repairs to get back into serviceable shape. But the Venezuelan government doesn't have $5 million to fix a ferry. The shipyard employee, Jose Dominguez, thinks it might be best if someone else bought the vessel and gave it some TLC. Which brings us back here to the Port of Rochester. 
Didn't that ferry look good tied up here at the terminal? People sure loved it back in the day. Maybe someone would like to try to bring it back. Maybe you'd like to give it a shot. If so, contact President Maduro or send President Guaido and make them an offer they can't refuse. For the Democrat and Chronicle, this is Steve Orr in Charlotte. Sick him in the scrubber with a hose pipe on him. Sick him in the scrubber with a hose pipe on him. Sick him in the scrubber with a hose pipe on him.